drama is life with the dull bits cut out. On average, there are 5,000 cuts in your typical feature film. That means there is a cut every second in a standard 90 minute film. But in Hitchcock's Rope, outside of the hidden cuts, there are just five cuts in the entire movie and each has one specific purpose, to ratchet the tension. So before you run to the comments and tell me there are lots of hidden cuts, I know. However, these are confined to the moments in which the camera would have needed to change its magazine. Every 10 to 12 minutes or so. However, there are just a few moments in the film where Alfred has actually chosen to break his own rules. The seamless feeling of being entirely present at this dreadful party with a terrible secret. There's a dead body in the room. The first cut brings us into the flat without needing to remove walls and windows, which would have been an expensive foray in that era. Unfortunately, he didn't have access to the shiny computer graphics that we have now that would have allowed the camera to pass through the wall or even a keyhole. Dramatically, this cut also speaks volumes to the audience. It tells us exactly what this movie will be centered around. This murdered man and the two murderers hiding his box in their living room. It shocks us as we've just seen a normal street outside which could be in any city with normal people walking around doing normal things. But then we are assaulted by this cut, showing the dying breath of a man and the unceremonious hiding of his body. Alfred really knew how to choose some wickedly dark scripts. On to the next cut. This moment seems slightly innocuous compared to the previous cut, but it serves the purpose of telling us that this woman is so important to the story that Alfred will invest one of his precious cuts in introducing her into the scene. Be careful of my hair, it took hours. For those of you who don't know, this woman is the aforementioned dead man's fiance and is quite obviously a good human being who doesn't deserve to lose the man she's very much in love with. Compared to the other characters in the film, she is the only other person outside of the murderers that is given a cut in the film to introduce her. This helps us empathize with her as her story unfolds. One of the subjects for our dinner table suddenly rebelled. Like Lazarus, he rose... That's a lie! Philip! There's no word of truth in the whole story. This moment is what many might call the midpoint twist. The men start to squabble as the pressure of their actions seems to weigh far more heavily on one of the two murderers. We fear, therefore, that the men might have just let out too much from the bag as Alfred cuts over to one of the guests reacting. So throughout the movie, the camera is always panned and moved to each character effortlessly. But this time, the cut adds a huge emphasis and immediacy to the character's internal revelation, forcing us to ask, does he know? What did he see? Does he suspect anything? If it were just a pan, I don't feel we would have felt anywhere near as tense. There's something upsetting both of you a great deal, something that... Uh... Excuse me, sir. Keeping us on our toes, as always, Alfred never uses the same cut to do the same thing twice. This is testament to his directing chops, as the cut reveals the rather mundane entrance for the maid who has no real dramatic value at this point. However, Alfred is telling the audience, I know you want to watch how these two men will keep squirming out of trouble, but now I need you to watch this woman and only this woman until I say so. This is the ultimate form of directorial control. Alfred has chosen to show the maid's excruciatingly slow clearing of the tomb of their murdered friend. Check out my other episode if you want to see how brilliant this sequence really is. Now, the final throws of the film are filled with tension and brilliant blocking, but the choice of one last cut during the final battle is utter genius. So the murderers have convinced the main antagonist to describe what he thinks would have been the way in which their friend was murdered. However, when he seems to be getting rather close to the truth, the more confident of the two murderers grips a hidden pistol in his pocket. Here, Alfred cuts straight back to the party guest's face to see his recognition. Well, I think I'd get Philip to help me carry him out of the room, down the back stairs, and the two of us would put him into the car. A whip pan would have removed the immediacy of this recognition and his smooth covering by changing the story at the last moment to allay any suspicion that he knows the actual truth. 
the cut here also reveals that he finally recognises just how dangerous the situation is, therefore he is finally caught up with the audience and knows as much as we do. This is extremely cathartic and although he plays the antagonist, we are actually rooting for him to find the body and stop these men before they do it again, proving that their twisted logic of the world is wrong. There must have been something deep inside you from the very start that let you do this thing. But there's always been something deep inside me that would never let me do it. Alfred Hitchcock's Rope may be a brilliant real-time piece of filmmaking, but with just five choice cuts in the entire film, he proves that drama is real life with all the boring parts cut out. 